All right, hello YouTube. This is where it all started for me. Uh, when I got back into comics in 2012, I first started reading Lock and Key, and then I started reading random stuff. And then about that time, 2014, is when Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, took off, and I immediately read it, picked it up, and enjoyed it. Um, didn't pick it up originally because I thought like crazy stuff was going to happen with Miss Marvel, but uh, I just kind of liked it. It really reminded me of reading uh, Peter Parker and Spider-Man books as a kid, so I just kind of like gravitated towards it, really enjoyed the storyline. And then when they came upon issue 31 of volume 4, you add that to the 19 issues of volume 3 that G. Willow Wilson had written, and you get 50. So to mark the 50th anniversary of a new character in a new book, they commissioned this variant, this is the Virgin variant, obviously, from a an artist, a French artist named Stephanie Hans. And I immediately fell in love with it and said, oh boy, this is an artist that I could totally get into. And what started as kind of a casual hobby, um, in casual direction for my <laughs> collection, turned into a bit of an obsession. And so this video and the next two videos I'm going to do in this series are going to show you my Stephanie Hans collection, as well as the ones that I am missing. So there's sort of an order to these, but nothing in super uh, particular order. I'm just going to drop the camera down a tiny notch. There you go. So this is, I think, one of her absolute best. I had one of these and I sold it, I think, kind of cheap. Uh, but this is obviously another copy <laughs> because this is here and you're looking at it. Uh, this is Ironheart number one, Riri Williams' first uh, solo series as Ironheart, written by Eve Ewing. Ewing. Um, she had a solo series as Invincible Iron Man that Bendis wrote that didn't really do much after she broke out of the Tony Stark Invincible Iron Man series that Bendis also wrote. But in this one, it's uh, her story as Ironheart. It was a good 12-issue series. I think Eve Ewing is an excellent writer. Um, I'm really excited to see what she does with Champions Outlawed. Uh, but this cover is just amazing. They did not make a virgin variant of this, and I really wish they had because I would love to see the hair underneath that golden orange iron heart there. Um, this is Captain Marvel, and I'll tell you honestly, I don't remember which number Captain Marvel this is, but clearly this is a Captain Marvel uh, virgin variant. There is a trade dress version of this as well. And just realized that if I stand where I'm standing, I block some of the glare, so I'm going to continue to stand. This is then, she came out with her own series with Kieran Gillen, uh, Clayton Cowles on lettering in, oh, I don't know, 2000. 17 or 18? 2018, probably. Uh, this is the Virgin Variant to Die Number 1 with Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Hahn signed at the bottom. I did meet Kieran Gillen and get him to sign a bunch of stuff, but uh, this was an eBay purchase. As was this one, X-Men Blue 21, one of my all-time favorite Hans covers. There's just so much going on there. That kind of purple curvy crackle, the purple flames lower, the, the Venom-like mouth. I don't know if it's opening or closing, and I guess it's Jean Grey peeking out. I mean, this is just gorgeous. Everything about this one I just absolutely love. Um, and then there is this Venomized number... No, sorry. I'm out of order. Web of Black Widow number two. Uh, one of three great Black Widow covers she did. Not one of the harder-to-find ones, but uh, one of the... <laughs> My son's playing video games with his friends in the other room. But uh, still, I think an absolutely fabulous one. And one of the things I love about her work is she does digital um, painting. I don't know much about digital art. But if you look here, the detail in the background is often something that I, I overlook at first. Because um, I look at what's in the foreground. But once I look at the detail in the background, it tells a different story or part of the same story. And it's just like, it's just magnificent. I love looking at her stuff like carefully and closely. Here's the Venomized number one with a... Venomized Psylocke cover. Again, gorgeous purples and blacks. Um, you know, you just kind of look at one thing and you see the sword and the glimmer, but then you look down here at some of the detail and stuff, and it's just just fabulous. Love the work. Back to Miss Marvel. Let me grab another stack. Shout out to Poor Man's Comics, who did this with his Adam Hughes collection, and it's kind of what uh, got me into this. This next stack is going to be the work she did with Kieran Gillen before Die. They were together on 
a Journey into Mystery run, and this is not in the order, but in the middle of that run, there was, ooh, the camera got knocked somehow. Uh, oh, it's just a larger amount of comics, I see, so they're pushing up more. Okay, so um, this was a crossover one-shot called Exile that has a five-part storyline uh, that went back and forth between Journey into Mystery and New Mutants. Um, and you can see the uh, way she drew them, especially the uh, the kid Loki back there, I think is going to be very prominent in the uh, the Loki TV series. And then I absolutely love this one. I have no idea what's going on there, but it's such a blend of different, um, just different looks. And this is Journey into Mystery 637. Like I said, some of these are out of order. New Mutants 42, Journey into Mystery 638. I don't know why that's backwards. And then it ended with New Mutants, this is part five of five, 43, um, right there. Again, like you see this, but then you start to look at the detail back here and you're like, wow, that is awesome. This sheer kind of um, covering here, the veil, the fact that you can see them behind it, just really exquisite. So this is the beginning of the Journey into Mystery run. This is 622. There's a couple minor keys in this dealing with Loki. I don't think they'll ever amount to anything, but it's, it's nice to have. 623. Anybody who lives in Tacoma, you can grab the uh, this run at Half Price Books whenever it opens up, or you could go to curbside. No, they're closed now. When they do go back to curbside, you could ask them for it. 624. 625. 626 right here. I love that little loser. This is 626.1. This is not a Hans cover. This apparently takes place in between pages 20 and 21 of issue 622. It's like, a, I, I don't know, I didn't read the whole story, but that's not Hans. This is another one. This guy reminds me of the demon that hangs out um, in the bar in the TV series Angel from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I uh, really like that one, 627. 628, 629, 630, I love this Odin cover here, very cool, telling stories to his children, 631, 632, this is one of the, the minor keys, and then 633, now there is a variant to this. I don't know if it's 1 in 50 or what, but it's very, very hard to find. And if you do find it, it's very, very expensive. Um, I believe it's a venomized variant, and it's uh, it's one of the Grail books for Hans um, collectors. Not the Grail book, but one of them. The third part of this series is going to be going over the books that I don't own, um, 634. There's a bunch of really hard to find ones, and then a bunch of easy ones I just haven't picked up yet. 635, 636, and you've seen this before, but I like to have things in order, so I had this when I did the five-part series at the beginning, and <laughs> now I've got 637 and 638 here and now, and that brings us to 639, 640, 641, which is another one of my favorite, uh, favorite covers. Because if you look down here, it almost looks like a zipper, and, a, and then it looks like a mouth. That's not where the thumb is, so it's just hard to tell. Exactly, I guess that's the thumb up there. Exactly what's going on down here, which is why I love it. 641, 642, and then we skip to 645, and I believe that's intentional. I believe she did not do um, 43 and 44, but if I recall, she's she skipped those two covers for whatever reason. Uh, here we have Witch Hunter Angela Part 1. And that means I need to grab some more stuff out because this was supposed to be with the next patch. When she did a lot of work continuing her work with uh, the Norse um, gods, you've got Witch Hunter Angela Part 1. Again, written by Gillen, art by Marguerite Bennett. But Hans, she did some of the art of this, but she did the covers in Marguerite Suavage. I guess it's lettering. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, and then you got issue two. Issue three. And issue four. Asgard's Assassins. Um, why is this backwards? Gosh darn. 
issue one. And this is a popular one, about a $10 key. First appearance of her, Angela's lesbian lover, possibly, or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. It hasn't gone down much. I mean, it peaked at like 15, 20, but it's still holding firm at like 10 or 12 on most lists. So if you see this one for cheap, you could pick it up. Uh, there's issue two. Angela's um, bosom became more prodigious, apparently, from the uh, Journey into Mystery series. This is one of my favorites right here. Uh, issue number four. I love that reflection. There's a later one with Scourge where the reflection's really cool. Issue five. Looks like Gamora's eating the sword down there. Uh, issue six. Love the red. This is her favorite color. Stephanie Hans will always joke about reds and if she doesn't do red for a while she'll she'll joke about getting back to red at some point soon now there's um three uh, at least three covers for issue one in the queen of hell series one of them is by julian tedesco the regular one one of them is an annie Wu variant that's really really cool and i own both of those because hans does the interiors but uh the one that she did the cover for is um a 1 in 25, and it's a little bit harder to find, a little bit more expensive. I haven't gotten around to purchasing that one yet. Um, and again, I love this. Like, your eye is drawn to this in the center. But when you look down here, you see these spikes. It's so freaking cool. I don't know if I mentioned this at the beginning. This is my uh, Stephanie Hans cover collection. I don't own everything that she has done interiors on. I own a few that she's done interiors on that she hasn't done covers. Um, but if she's done the cover, I own it about at least 90% of them. Uh, there's issue four, Queen of Hell. Issue five, she did not do the cover for Queen of Hell issue six. And there is Angela, Queen of Hell, issue seven. Moving along, you might have heard of this comic book called Die. I have. Happens to be my favorite book on the market right now. Um, and it's funny thing is, I realized as I was going through my collection that I'm actually missing one. One that I've owned multiple copies of and sold multiple times, but I realized I didn't have the one I need. So we'll get up that to that in a minute. But here is Die number one, signed by Kieran Gillen and <laughs> Remarked by him with a little dice. I didn't get it witnessed. I don't care. That's not what I'm about or why I'm here. Um, I just like meeting the artist or the writer in this case and getting it signed. So there's die issue one. There's die issue one second printing. Again, signed by Kieran Gillen. There's die issue one third printing. There is die issue one. This is the Virgin variant of the fourth printing. That is, oh, that's the fifth printing. I think I have an extra one in here. That's the Virgin variant of the fifth printing, apparently. And this is also the fifth printing. So I'm missing the fourth printing regular, not the fourth printing Virgin variant. So I'm actually missing the fourth printing of die number one, which is really funny. Um, considering I'm such a fanatic and I collect so much and I have so much of them. Just trying to tilt this a little bit because my camera likes to play games with me. Um, here we go. We've got die number two. This is Chuck. And I love the fact that if you look at this, it looks like the brass knuckles are collecting to are connected to the vape pen, which just to me is like he's got a bong or something connected to uh, brass knuckles. It's just insanely weird and is very much Chuck. This is the second printing of number two, totally different cover. In the beginning, they did a lot of different covers for some of the alternate printings, and then towards the end, and also for the first one, the, the alternate printings were kind of similar. Here is the third printing, which is just a different color scheme from the second printing. Here is the Virgin variant for, I think, the fourth printing, or maybe the third printing, but it's the exact same just a virgin variant um you know to get the exact same comment comic you'd have to be a sucker or just you know a fanatic and i guess i fill <laughs> those categories quite well and i don't mind Ugh. let's see this might be too large of a stack here um 
yeah, there was the fourth printing, which again is just the same. Didn't show you that one yet. So here we go with die number three. This is Matt, the Grief Knight. Not one of my favorite covers, or one of the few covers that I don't love. Might be a nice way to put it. Here is the is it safe? second printing. Yeah, I can't read. Second printing. This is a character, not one of the main characters, but integral part of this issue. Really, this was the issue where you realized you were in something different altogether, and it was just gut-wrenching. Um, and I don't say that about comic books often, but yeah, this was a gut-wrenching issue. Here's the third printing. Here's the Virgin variant of the third printing, if you start to notice the theme. And here is the... Actually, I just want to double check. Is that a Virgin variant of the third, or is that a fourth printing that just happened to be a Virgin? It's a, a Virgin variant of the third. Just making sure. I don't think there was a fourth printing for number three, but we'll see if I was wrong. There's number four. There's another copy of number four that shouldn't be in there. There's the second printing of number four. This is showing um, Angela, who is the sister of um, Ash, who's the kind of like leader or the head of the gang. Um, there's the third printing. And then we come up to issue five. This is Isabel, who's one of my favorite characters, but is not one of my favorite uh, covers. She's kind of too dark, yet her weapon is phenomenal. Just phenomenal. Um, moving along, they came out with a Virgin variant to issue six. This is the second arc, so to celebrate the second arc, they came out with a Virgin variant um, from Rad Raptor Comics. This is number 51 out of 500, and this is 100 out of 500. And then there's the regular printing, and then there is the second printing of number six. After six, people got their orders straight. Either they dropped it or, or they, they picked it up if they wanted it. And they don't have anything beyond first printings for seven, eight, nine, ten, which my wallet is very thankful for. Don't know that I love that one as much as I love everything. But again, once you start looking at the detail that your eye is not first drawn to, you start to go, wow, this one I love. Nine. And then wraps up with this ash you can always tell ash because she's got this like fire flame coming from her left eye which is really cool so that is less than half of my collection but that is either the wall books or the gillen kind of norse mythology slash die books and i will be back with another video with a whole different set of books in a little bit